Hello guys, welcome back, PK here. So in this video, I'm collaborating with TBS for this interesting algebra question from Harvard MIT Math Tournament, so stay tuned. Hello guys, welcome back, PK here. So in this video, we're going to be solving this interesting algebra question from Harvard MIT Math Tournament. For this question, I collaborated with TBS last year. So the full description of the question is in the beginning of the video. So this is kind of like a summary of the question. So your f is from r to r, and then your f of x is a piecewise function, such that if your x is not between negative cube root of 2 and 0, then your f of x is 1 over x squared plus square root of x to the power of 4 plus 2x. Otherwise, it is 0. Then the question is asking you the sum of all real numbers of x for which f 10x is equal to 1 can be written as a plus b times square root of c over d. Then what's the value of 1000 a plus 100 b plus 10c plus d. Before we actually start, let's talk about this f10x. Question already described this f of nx. This is going to be the function that your f of x is iterated n times, right? So this is not f to the power of n of x. Simply, for example, if you have f3 of x. This is not f cube of x, but this is simply f of f of f of x. Okay, so knowing this, what I'm going to do first is I'll get the derivative of this f of x in case your x is not between negative cube root of 2 and 0. So if you get your derivative of f of x, f prime x is then going to be, your denominator is simply square of what you have. So it has to be x squared uh, plus square root of x to the power of 4 and then plus 2x. And you need to square this. Okay, then your numerator has to be, first of all, we should have negative sign of parenthesis. Then we have 2x. Okay, then we have a plus. Now you have a fraction. On the numerator, we should have now 2x cubed plus 1. And then your denominator is only going to be now 2 times square root of x to the power of 4. And then plus 2x. Okay, and close your... Parenthesis. Okay, so this is your derivative of f of x if your x is not between negative cube root of 2 and 0. And then for this question, I'll kind of like talk about two miracles. Miracle number one, that is f of negative um, 2 to the power of 1 over 3. This is equal to 2 to the power of negative 2 over 3. We can simply plug this negative 2 to the power of 1 over 3, which is this negative cube root of 2 to the x. Okay, then your f of that value turns out to be 2 to the power of negative 2 over 3, right? So what I'm going to do is I'll be checking this f of 2 to the power of negative 2 over 3 and see what we have, right? So this is just going to be now 1 over... Okay, so first of all, okay, we have... 2 to the power of negative 4 over 3. Okay, then we have plus. Now then we have square root of. Okay, then the second term has to be now 2 to the power of negative 8 over 3. Okay, then the second term has to be then plus 2 to the power of 1 over 3 then. Okay. So if you calculate this, if you calculate this, then it should be 1 over now 2 to the power of negative 4 over 3. Then we have now plus uh, the same, 2 to the power of negative 4 over 3. Now times square root of, in this case, it has to be just a 1 plus 8 inside. So that's why this should turn out to be 1 over now. Uh, 4 times, okay, then we have 2 to the power of negative 4 over 3. So that's why this should be equal to 2 to the power of negative 2 over 3, 2. If you calculate this 2 to the power of negative 2 over 3, then it should be around 0 0.629, which has to be less than 1. So that's why, based on this, we can maybe talk about the graph of this f of x, right? So for the graph of f of x, it should be then looking just like this. Okay, this is x-axis and the y-axis. Okay, first, when your x is strictly greater than 0, it has to be 
a decreasing function. So monotone decreasing. And at the same time, if you consider this range for dx, right, your f of x has to be now increasing function, monotone increasing, all the way up to when your x is negative 2 to the power of 1 over 3. Then we just check the corresponding y value was now 2 to the power of negative 2 over 3, right. Okay, this is what we have so far. So that's why maybe we can say something about, okay, based on this. So from this, we can maybe talk about, like, limit. When x is going to infinity, then your f of x, right, that is going to 0. And then also the limit, when x is going to negative infinity, then your f of x, okay, also approaching to 0. And then uh, when your x limit, when your x is the right side of limit, to 0, positive, then f of x, okay, this is then going to positive infinity. And then be ready to check how your f of negative 2 to the power of 1 over 3. This was equal to 2 to the power of negative 2 over 3. So this will be kind of like the basic setup to solve this question. Okay, then based on this, we can talk about this f of f of x. Okay, so this is just f2 of x based on the definition from the question. So in this case, we can talk about the graph of it should be then now looking just like this. Okay, then it has to be at when x is negative, it has to be monotone decreasing. And at the same time, this corresponding value has to be now 2 to the power of negative 2 over 3, as we saw. And then, yeah, it should be just an increasing function when x is greater than zero. So that's why based on this, we can talk about how your f 10 of x that we are looking for should have similar shape characteristics with this f 2x. And then since we already checked this 2 to the power of negative 2 over 3 was less than 1. So that's why your 1 has to be up there. This has to be y is equal to 1. So that's why if you set your f 10 of x is equal to 1. That means we should have two solutions. Since, like I said, f10x should have similar shape characteristics with this f2x. Okay, so then based on this, miracle number 2. Miracle number 2 is now f of x. If you set your f of x is equal to 1, right? If you set your f of x is equal to 1, then uh, we should have two solutions. We can actually check this by setting your x now square plus square root of x to the power of 4 uh, plus 2x is equal to 1. So this is going to be then now x to the power of 4 plus 2x is now equal to 1 minus x square square, which has to be the same as 1 minus 2x square now plus x to the power of 4. So that's why we can cancel those x to the power of 4 out. Okay, then we should end up with now 2x squared. And then we have plus 2x. And then minus 1, this is equal to now 0, right? So that's why if you're using quadratic formula, then your x should turn out to be negative 2 plus minus square root of now 4 minus 4 times 2 times negative 1 over uh, 4. So that's why if you calculate this, then your x is going to be negative 2 plus minus square root of now 12. That is 2 rad 3 over 4. So that is why, so possible two options for the x has to be negative 2 plus minus 2 square root of 3 over 4, which is simplified to negative 1 plus minus square root 3 over 2. Okay, then I will take only one of them and then call that as just x1, right? So I'll be calling this x1 as among those two numbers, I'll take negative 1 plus square root of 3 over 2, right? And then if you set your f of x 
is equal to this x1, then we should have two solutions. One of them has to be 1, and then the other one is just conjugate of this, which is negative 1 minus square root 3 over 2. Based on this, we can talk about this f now 2x. If you set this as equal to this 1, then we should have two solutions, right? Okay, which has to be just the 1 and negative 1 minus square root 3 over 2. But then again, if you set your f2x is equal to this negative 1 minus square root of 3 over 2, then since this negative 1 minus square root 3 over 2 is a negative number, in that case, there's no solution. So using the same logic, then we can talk about how your f of 4x should also have two solutions. One of them is 1, the other one is negative 1 minus square root of 3 over 2. Same for then f10 of x. f10 of x that we are looking for should also have two solutions. One of them is 1, the other one is negative 1 minus square root of 3 over 2. So that's why the question was asking you about the sum of all real numbers of x for which f10 of x is equal to 1. So that's why now we will talk about then 1 minus... Okay, 1 plus negative 1 minus square root of 3 over 2. Okay, if you calculate this, then it has to be now 1 minus square root of 3 over 2. That is in the form of this, a plus b square root of c over d form, right? So that's why the question is asking you 1000a plus 100b plus 10c plus d. So that's why if you calculate this, then it should be now, first of all, um, a is 1. So we have 1000. 1,000, and then after we have uh, minus 100. Minus 100, then we have uh, plus 30. And then we have now plus 2, since your d is equal to 2. So that's why if you calculate this, then it should be now 932. So the answer for this question is 932. Okay, so like I said, pretty interesting algebra question from Harvard-MIT math tournament. So I'll be back with more videos, more questions like this sometime soon.